Good morning, virtuals. Here is the answers to the drops in a bucket lesson that you worked on yesterday. After you've completed yours, come here and check and see if you have the same answers that I do. The first section is homophones. Words that sound the same, but they mean something different and they're spelled differently. This is a picture of a drill. The answer is bore. He is going to bore a hole in that wood. This little girl is selling lemonade. So this is going to be the word sale. S-A-L-E. That word is a homophone. This one, S-A-I-L, means like to sail a boat. Number three, Becky decided to change her, Becky decided to name her blank buster. Well, we've already used bore and sail, so it's gonna have to be horse. The first one is the creature. So here, I would add the word horse. The second word means that your voice is all scratchy and dry. Our cabbage is only about 90 cents. C-E-N-T-S, a head. That's the word for money. This one means you have no sense or use your common sense. And this one means something that smells. Perfume has a scent. Punctuation. When you use quotation marks to show that someone is talking, you have to use punctuation a little bit differently. So I am going to draw in your punctuation. Do you know what has no legs but sometimes runs fast? You need a question mark here and close the quotation marks. The beginning is here, the end is here. Asked Mary, period. This is just a statement. Oh, I know that one, cried Nick excitedly. That means exclamation point here, quotation marks for talking, period at the end. It's a watch or clock, Oliver calmly interrupted. Comma here, quotation marks, because he's speaking. Oliver calmly interrupted, period. Notice all of these sentences end with a period but the punctuation for what the person is speaking changed. The city center aquarium has a touch and field pool with several kinds of starfish, comma, some clams, comma, non-stinging jellyfish, comma, and small rays. This section of the review will always deal with commas. We use commas when we list things in a series, and you use a comma before and. Verb tense, that means when is the action happening, in the past, in the present, or in the future. My teacher taught us six ways to show respect for ourselves and others. That is in the past, because the verb taught is a past tense verb. Going to scroll down a little so we can see. Fact or opinion. A fact is something I can prove. An opinion is something that someone thinks or feels. Geometry is the study of lines, angles, and shapes. That is a fact. That is the actual definition of geometry. Geometry is harder than geography. That's an opinion because that's what someone thinks or feels. This section is about possessive nouns. This first word, employees, simply means more than one employee or worker. The second example, 
has an apostrophe here. And it shows that the employee owns something. One employee owns something. The third example with the S on the end before the apostrophe means that there is a lot of employees all owning something. Our company has a large sign on the employee's entrance. That means the entrance that the employee walks through. Let's read the other examples so I'm not confused. All 20 employees come and go through that door. That sounds like this one. So I'm going to put the plural here. Employees. It just means more than one. Just inside the door, you'll see each employee's locker. This is a clue. Each means one. So that means I have to use employee apostrophe s. That must mean the first one is employees, then the apostrophe. Contractions. They want to know what does the word she's actually mean? Well, it means she has. She's found some firewood. So we'll, that means we will have a campfire. Adjective or adverb. This is an adjective. Polite describes a noun. This is an adverb because adverbs usually end in ly. This word has an ly on the end, politely. It tells how you're going to do something. I can speak politely or I can sit politely, can eat politely. This goes with a verb. Everyone wants to hire polite people. This word is an adjective. Didn't mean to turn it red. The clerk spoke politely, tells how they spoke to every customer. Number 18, the root word in unskilled and skillful is, well, remember that a root word is the word at the center that has the most meaning. In both of these words, the root word is skill. Unskilled and skillful both have the root word skill. Right there. They just have prefixes and suffixes around them. The chairperson talked nonstop, so no one else got to blank. Well, if you talk nonstop, it means you don't ever stop talking. So no one else got to say anything. I'm just going to circle the answer here. Nonstop means no one else gets to say anything because you're talking the whole time. In nonstop, nonstick, and nonsense, the prefix non means not or without. Nonstick pan is a pan that food will not stick to. To speak nonstop means that you do not stop. And nonsense means you have no sense. I hope this helps, and I hope you got them all correct. It's okay if you didn't. You're learning, and next time you will.